my name is uh, Canon Byron Gilmore, and I'm the rector here at Christ Church. And what a joyful occasion tonight is. This afternoon is. This evening is. Uh, today, the Bishop of Credit, well, actually, our new area bishop, Bishop Shaw, uh, will be ordaining Luigi Battista to the diaconate in Christ's Holy Catholic Church more particularly in the Worldwide Anglican Communion and in the Anglican Church of Canada. It is our joy and our privilege to welcome each and every one of you. A special warm welcome to Luigi's family, friends and neighbors, and of course those of who will be joining us prayerfully this evening and those who will be participating in the service later when it goes out on YouTube. Uh, you are all most welcome. Tonight's service will have some musical offerings within it. Uh, I've, I was asked to remind you that uh, singing is not something we're supposed to be doing according to, the, to uh, the safety regulations, but I suppose if you hum along, no one will no one will know. <laughs> um, and then of course, uh, tonight's beautiful liturgy is within the context of the Holy Eucharist. Our Eucharistic discipline in the Anglican Church is that all baptized Christians, regardless of denomination, are welcome to receive communion if they so choose. Uh, that is a sincere offer which can be accepted or declined with equal ease because it's, that's not every church's practice. And of course, we respect the practice of other Christians as well. So if, if you'd like to receive Holy Communion, you're welcome to do so. You, please, you do not have to. If you'd like to come forward for a blessing, please do so by indicating by crossing your arms before your chest. Uh, a little bit more about that later on in the service. Uh, a very warm welcome to one and all, uh, especially to our, our new bishop, Bishop Rosilla Shaw. And uh, in just a few minutes, we'll begin. Good evening. It's a delight and a privilege to be here this night as we worship together in this way and as we celebrate especially the ordination to the diaconate of Luigi. Thank you so much for gathering and to those online, thank you for being here to witness with us and uh, we'll begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are grateful to the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation as the caretakers of this land and recognize the benefits we receive from this land. We acknowledge and give thanks to the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples who have walked before us. 
this land continues to be home for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We are all treaty people. Treaties are promises to protect and share the land and to live equally with one another. As we reflect on this truth, let us also reflect on the harm done to the indigenous peoples. Let us also reflect on ways for reparation and reconciliation. in learning, argument, and hospitality. May we so rejoice in your love that the world may come to know the depths of your wisdom, the wonder of your compassion, and your power to bring life out of death. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our friend and brother, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord in one of mine. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others, that the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equal equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her, her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who is about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, 
leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop, thank you for allowing me to speak at your pulpit tonight. How much time do I have? <laughs> all night. All night. Good, <laughs> good. It's going to take me all night to get my pages in order here. <laughs> Honestly, I ask that. I ask that question in all seriousness because um, we are commemorating. We're acknowledging not just one, but three saints, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They're siblings. They come as a set. For all of you who have brothers and sisters, you know that um, it's not a good idea, sibling rivalry, right, to put one under the spotlight and, and not the rest. And we have Luigi presenting himself before God for consecration to the office and work of deacon in the church. They all have incredible lives to tell, incredible stories of their lives. But I know we want to get on to the exciting bit where the bishop lays her hands on Luigi and we all get to witness the outpouring of God's spirit on our dear beloved brother. So I won't take too long. But since each life bears tremendous witness to the extravagant love of God, embodied in Jesus Christ, and since each life story is an example how we might experience new life in the power of God's Spirit, they all deserve our attention this evening. Three of them are ancient stories, and one is, well, you can't get more current. Let's begin with the ancient ones. The Gospels of Luke and John present Martha, Mary, and Lazarus as siblings living in Bethany. They are described as dear friends of Jesus. Each of them has a very unique relationship with Jesus, fashioned by their own personality and their own situation. Martha. Martha embodies the faith that we are called to confess with confidence. We first meet Martha in Luke's Gospel. She invites Jesus for supper, opens her home to him. Kind of like the hostess with the mostess. Martha has the gift of hospitality. But like all the gifts and talents we possess, they often come with a dark side. The story describes her as distracted by all the busyness of the evening, agitated to the point of complaining to the guest of honor, exposing her sister's shortcomings. And Jesus' response is given with such tenderness and affection. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Have you ever had the pleasure of realizing that you are fully seen and fully known by someone. Validation is a confidence booster. Jesus brings correction to Martha couched in love. When we see her next, it is at her brother's death. 
Martha is the one, still bold and brash, but solid and confident in her faith in Jesus. She is the one who approaches boldly proclaiming, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. I believe you are the Christ. I believe God will give you whatever you ask. Tonight, we encounter Jesus once again at Martha's table. The candles are lit. The table is laden with food and wine. Yet Martha stays in the background at this dinner. We don't hear from her tonight. Perhaps she is now content to serve without complaint. Her heart and mind finally at rest in the, in the knowledge that she is known and loved by her teacher and her friend Jesus. This is how our loving God convicts us, teaches us, not with shame and guilt and anger, but with deep love poured out. Mary of Bethany. Mary represents the freedom and abundance of spirit which is ours in Christ. At that first dinner party in her sister's home, we found Mary sitting in silence at the feet of Jesus. Here she is again, another dinner party still sitting at the feet of Jesus in silence. This time, six days before his crucifixion, she is wiping Jesus' feet with a very costly perfume and her hair. Very costly perfume. Like we're talking a year's laborer's wage. Why the extravagance? Jesus says straight up, the perfume is for his burial. She could have just put it away safely in a cupboard until then. I'm wondering what would compel her to such a brazen, undignified act, at least for a first century Palestinian Jewish woman on this night. From whence came such devotion and freedom of spirit. So, it helps if we entertain the idea that this Mary of Bethany and Mary Magdalene are one and the same person. And now, since we want to get to the exciting bit, I'm not going to take any precious time with a convincing argument as to why this could be the, tape, the case, that they're one and the same. I will say that for most of its existence, the Roman Catholic Church held to this theory. And if we do entertain this idea, let's just use our imaginations. It brings another dimension to this Mary of Bethany. Because while we don't know very much at all about Mary of Bethany, we know a lot about Mary Magdalene, whom Jesus healed of seven demons. Have you? ever been in a place of mental torment, no matter for a day or years? Have you ever felt the sting of being ostracized from your circle of friends or family because of something you had no control of? And through the compassion of another, you are rescued from the torment, brought back into right relationship with those around you. Such gratitude must have filled Mary's heart to overwhelming. Jesus set her free from all that bound her. Jesus created the space for Mary to move through life no longer governed by the voices of demons. Mary is governed by a new voice, a voice of extravagant love. Lazarus. Lazarus is a sign of eternal life that awaits us. He is described as the friend whom Jesus loved. Now, bear with me. I invite you, I want you to all close your eyes and conjure up the image of the closest friend you have ever had in your life. What was it about that relationship? 
that brought you together so? Do you have the same sense of humor? Perhaps conversation flows? Or you're both at ease in the silence? I like to imagine it was something like that for Jesus and Lazarus. And then Lazarus gets sick. He suffers. No recovery in sight. He feels the absence of his best friend as his breath becomes shallower and things fade away. He dies. And four days later, from deep inside his tomb, so the story goes, he hears a voice he recognizes, the one who knows him so well, calling him back to life. He had no choice but to respond. The call of love, it was so strong, he could not not heed it. And here he is tonight, sitting at table with his dearest friend Jesus, as if all that pain and suffering never happened, drinking and eating and laughing, looking across the table at his friend, shaking his head, overwhelmed by such a great mystery, such love poured out. My friends, these ancient stories, they're not locked in time. These stories are alive and stir our hearts to turn to the God who loves us with that kind of love. And these stories are being worked out in 2021 in our own lives. The love of God is so powerful as to transform the smallness of our lives, so powerful as to call us from our tombs and make all things new. Like the three siblings of Bethany, we are called to open our homes, to open our hearts, moment by moment, to Jesus the Christ. Jesus, the Anointed One. Some would say that the Christian life is confining, boring, motivated by guilt and fear. If we look at these three, the life of a follower of Jesus is just the opposite. The life of God's church is liberated and full of joy. And such abundant life is found in the intimacy between humanity and the divine. And that brings us to Luigi. Luigi has admitted publicly that his life as a young man was difficult. And it is with his permission that I speak of this again tonight. His life was full, loaded with emotional pain, as he was often misunderstood and rejected just for who he was. Luigi's life was on a trajectory. And Luigi, you have told us also how you relate to the story of Jonah being swallowed and finding yourself in the belly of the whale. It was in responding to the call of Jesus Christ where the rewriting of Luigi's narrative began. He was set on a new trajectory of a life lived in peace, which came from speaking his truth and living into who God truly intended him to be. And Luigi has made it his life's work to journey with young people in the public school system who having found themselves on the margins, struggle. And he loves them in Christ's name. With such love poured out, they too are given the space and the means to rewrite their stories. A deacon embodies the church in mission, standing at the threshold of the church and the world. Luigi has been doing this vital work already. We affirm his ministry tonight. 
and he will leave this place consecrated to the ministry of Jesus Christ, empowered by God's Spirit. I read recently, Deacons are lovers. Rosalind Brown. Lovers of God. The church, the body of Christ, lovers of God's world. Remember from tonight's gospel, the image of Mary wiping the feet of Jesus with her hair. It's compelling and evocative. And the Greek word for wipe, ekmaso, something like that, I don't speak Greek, used to describe Mary's loving act is the same word used in the account of Jesus wiping his disciples' feet at the Last Supper. How fitting that in a few moments, the bishop will present Luigi with a towel, signifying such servanthood. My friends, one can only serve as Christ served when one is profoundly struck and changed by divine love. As these four saints can attest to. Luigi, you will leave through these doors tonight, empowered by the mighty spirit of the living God. May you minister to all whom God places in your path with the freedom of spirit and the extravagant attention of Mary. And may you return through these doors to serve at Christ's table with a full heart. May you pronounce the gospel with the boldness of Martha. And may you stand at the altar, moved to silence, struck by the beautiful mystery of it all. And with the newfound life of Lazarus, may you send us out into the streets of Brampton and beyond, overflowing with laughter and love in the power of God's Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as we say together the declaration of our faith. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one holy Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father with the Father and the Son, who is both been glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we will have the presentation. Has he been selected in accordance with the canons and customs of this church? And do you believe his manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you.
Luigi, will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so. And I solemnly declare that I do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation. And I solemnly promise do solemnly promise to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and the worship of the Anglican Church of Canada. Good. Now we'll have you sign these declarations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I invite everybody to stand. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Luigi Antonio Francesco Battista for ordination to the sacred order of deacons. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime for which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Luigi be ordained a deacon? It is. Will you uphold him in this ministry? We will. Excellent. Please be seated again. Luigi, every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ serving God the Creator through the power of the Holy Spirit. God now calls you to a special ministry of servanthood directly under the authority of your bishop. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. As a deacon in the church, you are to study the Holy Scriptures, to seek nourishment from them, and to model your life upon them. You are to make Christ and his redemptive love known by your word and example to those among whom you live and work and worship. You are to interpret to the church the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacraments and you are to carry out other duties assigned to you from time to time. At all times, your life and teaching are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. Do you believe that you are truly called by God and this church to the life and work of a deacon? I believe I am so called. Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures? I will. Will you look for Christ in all others, being ready to help and serve those in need? I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to your people? I will. Will you in all things seek not your glory, but the glory of the Lord Christ? I will. May the Lord, by his grace, uphold you in the service to which you are called. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand. 
as the deacon kneels. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. We pray to you, Lord Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and to be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of your church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in true and godly life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our worldwide Anglican communion, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Andrew, our diocesan, the College of Bishops of this diocese, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, hunger for truth, thirst after righteousness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Luigi, chosen deacon in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he may faithfully fulfill the duties of his ministry, build up your church and glorify your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, he may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the communion of the church and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Mary, blessed Martha, blessed Lazarus, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, Lord. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Enlighten with celestial 
life and fire of love enable me with perpetual light the tallness of a blinded sight anoint and cheer our soiled face with the We praise and glorify you, most merciful God, because in your great love for our human race, you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take the form of a servant. He came to serve and not to be served, and to teach us that the one who would be great among us must be the servant of all. He humbled himself for our sake, and in obedience accepted death, even death on a cross. Therefore, you highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name. And now we give you thanks that you have called this your servant to share this ministry entrusted to your church. Send down your Holy Spirit upon your servant Luigi, whom we now consecrate in your name to the office and work of a deacon in the church. Almighty God, give to this your servant grace and power to fulfill his ministry. Make him faithful to serve, ready to teach, and constant to advance your gospel, and grant that always having full assurance of faith abounding in hope and being rooted and grounded in love, he may continue strong and steadfast in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and your Holy Spirit belong glory and honor, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Luigi, receive this Bible as the sign of your authority to proclaim God's word. And receive this towel as the sign of your authority to assist in the ministration of the holy sacraments and of your servanthood on behalf of the Church of God. It is now my privilege to welcome Luigi as the Anglican Church of the World's newest deacon. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As we give thanks for the many gifts bestowed upon us this night, we give thanks for the gift of call that Luigi has responded to. We give thanks for the gift of life, of those lives given up and lost during this COVID time. Especially this night, we give thanks for the life of Troy. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the triumph of Christ in the lives of your servants, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Accept this sacrifice of thanks and praise and give us grace to run our course with faith that we may come with all your saints to the eternal banquet in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who came not to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. He calls his faithful servants to lead your holy people in love, 
nourishing them by your word and sacraments. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Holy One, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ, and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom, and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty creator, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body for we shall wear in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just a moment, uh, an opportunity will be given for the congregation to come forward and to receive communion. One of the sides persons will come and uh, give you an opportunity to sanitize your hand with hand sanitizer and then to come forward please in a socially distant uh, uh, way to receive communion in one kind only and the sacrament of the host on your hand please. Uh, put communion into your hand and then go to uh, either those on this side of the church to this station over here, remove your mask and receive the sacrament. Then uh, close your mask on again, 
wash your hands with the hand sanitizer and return to your pew on the outside uh, aisle. Pretty straightforward, eh? Uh, just one other thing is all are welcome to receive communion, all baptized Christians. Uh, this can be accepted or declined with equal ease. Uh, those who wish to uh, instead come forward for a blessing, uh, please cross your arms before you and you'll receive a blessing from our bishop. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. I invite you to stand. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us with him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for leadership in the ministry of your church. We pray that Luigi may be to us a godly example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with him may serve you now and always, and rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May God be peace for you. May God be justice for you. May God be reconciling love for you and through you for all whom you meet. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, Holy Spirit, sustainer, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, be upon you and those whom you love and work through you this night and always. Amen. has ended, our service now begins. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Just for a moment, we're going to have an opportunity to do some photographs. Uh, sorry, Mr. Yeah. And uh, the first photograph is going to be uh, the bishop and Deacon Luigi. Then the, the second photograph will be the bishop, Deacon Luigi, and the altar party. And then the third photograph will be an opportunity for the bishop and Luigi to have a picture taken with members of his family. So if you'd like to be in members of the family, you'd like to come forward at, uh, at, at the end, we'll do that. We also had all the clergy that are in the congregation come up. Ah, okay. yes, yeah. So the second Thank photo, you. come on, come on up. So the Go first ahead. photo Thanks. is the, Go ahead. the bishop Thanks. and Luigi and, and, and our 
staff photographer, Mr. Stephen Nealon, will do a great job, I know. So you stay here. All right, Claire, um, if you feel like you could or would like to, please join us. 